Okay, I'm going to try to steam through this because my videos are so long. So this chapter is all about critical points. And one thing you're going to discover in this chapter is that, oh, I'm just doing something, there we go, is that sometimes you're going to, you're going to set your derivative, your first derivative. Oh, gosh, there we go, t equal to zero. And most of the times that's going to determine uh, what's called uh, local maxes, local mins. They're called extremas. But sometimes, once in a while, you're going to set your derivative to zero, and you're going to discover one, and it says that's a zero. But it's going to be actually like this. And that usually occurs, let's say, with x cubed, when any of the factors, even x minus 2 cubed, at the 2 comma 0 mark, will have this shape. And right at the flat point, there is a, s a slope of zero, but it's not clearly it's not a max or a min. So you have to be aware of that. The second, second point is sometimes you will be discover that there's a cusp. So cusp would be, let's say you have a parabola, but you have the absolute value of that parabola. Let's see, x squared minus 2. And right here at minus 2 comma 0, well, let's say 4, minus 2 comma 0 and 2 comma 0, you will have a bounce back. And your graph will not look like that at the bottom. It'll have a cusp. It'll look like that. And at these points here, technically, it, there's a critical point, but you won't be able to find a derivative there. Um, at least if you test on the left side, the slope will not match the right side. So cusps are another situation where you have to be aware of what your graph looks like. And almost always a cusp exists in an absolute value situation. And then finally, you can also get spots like... Um, yeah, again, the absolute value main graph, even this part here. Uh, technically, that's a critical point, but you're not going to really find it. Um, so those are the situations you have to be aware of. Other than that, setting your first derivative to equal to zero, you will discover what's called a max and min points, or, or critical points. And the critical points include all of what I just described. And the second, set in the second derivative to equal to zero, we'll discover what's called inflection points. Inflection points are when a slope is so, was going one direction and suddenly changes directions. So that's something they're not going to tell you just yet. But finally, if you find, let's say that your max point is at x is equal to 2 here, and you plug it into the second derivative, that 2 into the formula, and it comes out negative, that will be, tell you that it's a max point. If it, the result comes out positive, that will tell you it's a min point. But at this stage, they want you to test the derivative left and right to see what's going on as it approaches that point so that you learn. Um, and that's because if the slope's positive on the left and negative on the right, it is a max. If it's negative on the left and positive on the right, the derivative that is, then it's a min. And these things are things they want you to practice. So I'm going to go straight to this. And there they cover it all. They always cover it all in summary. I'm going to go straight through the questions. Oh, yeah, they want you to um, get good at uh, asymptotes again. Okay. So let's just take a picture of that. And the first one should be easy enough to answer. First ones always are. And again, you got to brush up on your factoring skills and your knowledge of the graphs and everything. Show the equations of the vertical and horizontal asymptotes. Okay, so... Clearly, x is equal to 2 is one horizontal, a vertical. x is equal to minus 2 is another here, right there. And finally, right up here at y is equal to 1. Great. It also tells me since there's two asymptotes down there at the bottom of the graph, and they're both at 2 and minus 2, that I'm going to have this situation down there. And then the fact that there's a horizontal asymptote that's above 1 tells me that up above is going to have the same x squared. Um, but it's going to be, um, yeah, they're going to match with their coefficients in front if y is equal to 1. So that's some information I accidentally know. Uh, what else do I know about this? It's pretty symmetrical, so we're probably dealing with exactly this. What about this one? Well, clearly the thing was coming down and it was going to be a normal sine curve. And then all of a sudden it had a uh, disruption in it. So it's probably x to the 4 at top. 
and x at the bottom and this would create a sine curve that looks just like that I believe I'll have to verify that and actually no it's because it's hovering here probably not it's probably x squared and x to the 5 but the vertical asymptote is x is equal to 1 is there a horizontal asymptote no there is not be careful some of these don't have it and it looks like there's possibly a oblique asymptote possibly I still not sure which usually means the power up above is one above the power down below okay and by the way it uh, yeah it could still be x squared it can't be x cubed. Maybe we'll, we could check both those out later and see what it looks like but we did we answered the question under what conditions does a rational function have a horizontal a vertical and an oblique okay so verticals are when the denominator has a restriction that doesn't cancel out for instance if I had this up top this here would not create a vertical uh, asymptote it would create a hole at minus 3 comma 0 you would see an undefined it, that's what canceling out does you still have the restriction but this part of it disappears this however creates a vertical asymptote at 2 x is equal to 2 so the line will never be able to cross through 2 um, when does it have a horizontal? Several conditions. When x is below, the power is below the power down here, you can have y is equal to 0. So when the power is smaller than down below, it will often be y is equal to 0. When the powers match, it will be based on their coefficients. So if you have a 3 here and a 1 here, then you have a 3 asymptote, horizontal asymptote. And finally, if the power is 1 above, you will actually have an oblique asymptote that's based on dividing this into that to determine the formula of the line. When there is no asymptote is when the power is exceeds that by a lot, and then you get these weird things that still might have uh, vertical asymptotes, but no visible horizontal ones. Evaluate the limit. So they want you to get used to finding out. Now, they do it in an interesting way. They factor out uh, the x's in the bottom and the top, which is in a bad way because you will also discover your line formulas that way. So when I factor x out of this top, I'm left with 2 plus 3 over x, right? And at the bottom, when I'm factored out the x, I'm left with 1 minus 1 over x. We can see that they match, that the powers match here as well. Um, now, what's interesting about that is actually I have to uh, bring out the 2x, my bad, to be left with 1 plus 3 over x. And I discover their coefficients are 2 and 1, which means there's a horizontal asymptote at 2, which means if as these numbers approach positive infinity, it tries to get close to y. So when you look at it, when this one approaches positive or negative infinity, it becomes almost infinitesimal and non-existent, as does this one. And essentially, 2 times 1 is 1 times over 1 times 1 is 2 over 1, which is what they're trying to show you, is that these little fractions here become infinitesimally small as, uh, the, as x approaches negative infinity and as x approaches positive infinity. They're trying to logically get you used to showing that using factoring on top and bottom. Okay, let's look at this one factoring. I can take a 5x squared. Notice, first of all, their powers are the same, so I'm going to have a horizontal asymptote that's based on their coefficients. But on the top, I can withdraw 5x squared, and I'm left with 1 minus 3 over 5x squared. And at the bottom, I can withdraw x squared, and I'm left with 1 plus 2 over x squared. And it's pretty clear that when x approaches positive or negative infinity, these fractions become insignificant. 3 over 10 million, 10 trillion, is still minus almost nothing. So we can see that those fractions can be ignored as x approaches a trillion. And therefore, we're simply left with 5 times 1, because these cancel out, times over 1 times 1, which is y is equal to 5. So as x approaches positive infinity and negative infinity, this is what we get. What about this one? Same technique. 
they want you to do the same thing over and over again. Okay, so they want you to factor out the minus 5x squared. And you're left with 1 minus 3 over 3x. Well, actually, no, you're left with 3 over 5x. And this one, you're left with, when you factor out 2x squared, you're left with 1 minus 5 over 2x squared. And again, you can see as these numbers become infinite, as x becomes huge, these b numbers become something, a fraction you can ignore. And you're left with, these cancel out, and you're left with just negative 5 over 2, which means the horizontal asymptote is approaching that as x approaches the function approaches this number as x approaches infinity from either end. Sometimes it's important to know, to know which side of the fraction it's, or the asymptote it's on, and sometimes, guess what? These things can cross. All right, and last one. What's interesting about this one is you're going to discover a oblique uh, asymptote just by the factoring process. So up top, I can factor out 2x5. And I'm left with 1 minus 3 over x to the 3 plus 5 over 2, I'm sorry, this should be 2x to the 3, over 2x to the 5. This is going to give you, this is a big hint in what you have to do to uh, figure out and actually, we're, we're, we're going to do that now. And at the bottom, I can take 3x4. Right? And I'm left with 1 plus 5 over 3x to the 3. Because these cancel out. And by the way, actually, this yeah, this 2 cancels out. And I'm left with minus 4 over 3x to the 4. Same thing happens. These fractions become infinitesimal. But what I'm left with here, when I cancel these out, I'm left with... 2 thirds x, which is a line that has a slope like that, which means that this is partially what my oblique uh, line formula will be if I want to discover it. So this means this, as x approaches infinity, I'm going to discover, okay, well, when I'm over here uh, and I punch in infinity here, just assume infinity is you know, a huge number. Two-thirds of that huge number is still a huge number, so I'm still approaching positive infinity on the y values. And as x goes over here, uh, negative infinity is still negative infinity, so the y values approach negative infinity on this side. So in this case, I'm approaching negative infinity. But what skill you're going to need to learn is how to figure out the formula of that line. And what you do is you take this, and you do long division. How many times does 3 go into 2, 5x? Well, to get a 2 out of it, you have to multiply it by 2 over 3, which is how we came up with that line formula in, any way, in the first place. So 2 over 3 goes in 2 over 3x times. So when I multiply 2 over 3x times here, I'm left with 2x to the 5, right? because the exponents of the x add, so I get x to the 5, the 3's cancel out, and I'm left with the 2x to the 5. But now I have to multiply everything else times it. So when I'm left with a 5x times that, I'm conveniently given a 10 over 3, positive 10 over 3x squared. Sometimes these won't line up perfectly, in this case they have. And the minus 4 times this, I'm left with a lovely minus 8 um, over minus 8 over, sorry, minus 8 over 3x. And obviously these can't subtract. So what's really there is there's a plus 0x here, plus 5. When I subtract these, like I would do in long division, these cancel out. That was the goal. Minus 3x squared minus 10 over 3. If I put the minus 3 over 3, I'm left with minus 9 over 3, and when I subtract minus 10 over 3, I'm left with minus 19, minus 19 over 3 x squared. That's what's left over. Then when I subtract, when I add, subtract these, I'm left with plus 8 third 
x because there was nothing there. And then I bring the 5 down. Now right away, we need to figure out just the next part of this line, and that's it for a line formula. That's all we need. We, notice it's, we know it's 2 thirds x squared. And we just need to know what do I multiply. Uh, and sometimes it doesn't work out as it does in here because this is x squared. What would I need to multiply this for? Yeah, and actually, you know what? Yeah. So I actually did that wrong because these, you also have to do the same thing. And you have to create a bunch of 0x to the 4s plus 0x to the 3s in, in order to do it right. And you would do it over here as well. And that almost immediately tells me that the line formula for this will just simply be this. Because after I'm done the subtraction here, it doesn't even create anything that I can subtract. They're all over here. So when I subtract them, I get 0. And for figuring out the line formula for this, all you need is the first two letters. And that's because a line only has an x and a slope and a b factor. The rest don't matter. Now you can do long division for this whole thing. And you will figure out a remainder, but the remainder won't play a factor in the oblique asymptote. Uh, whenever you want to prove these things to yourself, use your Desmos. Check for discontinuities, so that's where there be asymptotes or holes, and state the equation of any vertical asymptotes. Conduct a limit test, to, so they want to know what happens on either side. And so limit tests are just graphing techniques. And you should do get used to it anyway and just watch the graphing thing I did last time. Because even though I bumbled a couple things, it's pretty accurate in what you have to do. So this one's pretty straightforward. Uh, the x's match in powers. So their coefficients divide into 1. So we have a horizontal at y is equal to 1 if we cared. And the only exclusion is x can't be minus 5. Which means on either side of minus 5, it's important to know where this result is. Okay, and I can tell you it will flip from positive to negative for most of the times. And for obvious reasons. So if this is the graph, and I put my uh, vertical isotope over here, and I test for, let's say, let's just test for, let's make it easier on ourselves, and test for minus 4 over here, and minus 6 over here. Okay, so when it's minus 6, I get a minus 6 up top, and down below I get minus 1. So it's positive 6. So right there, I know it's way up here, and it's probably going to be scooting up like that. And then at minus 4, at the top I get minus 4, and at the bottom I get minus 1, or plus 1 rather. Yeah, so this one is minus 4, which means at minus 4, it's down here at minus 4. So I'm probably talking about something like that. And you got to remember your horizontal asymptote is there. So really we're talking about something that's going to do this and something that's going to do that. And really, you can draw it right there. It's not going to have a max or min, by the way, because it's always curving down or curving up. And the asymptote interferes with it. And it's essentially a horizontal line that got interrupted by that vertical asymptote. Because if the x could divide it by x, it, be, it would be y is equal to 1. It's a horizontal line that got interrupted by that. What about B? Try not to make so much of a mess. Okay, B is pretty straightforward as well. Also note that it crosses the uh, x-axis, has an x-intercept. And, oh, so did this, by the way, at, at 0. 0, comma, 0. So, for this one... Um, we notice that x can't be 2, so we know we're dealing with something that has a vertical asymptote. We know that it's very much like a um, rational graph, because it's got a binomial up top and bottom. We also know that they're the same powers, so there's a horizontal at y is equal to 1. So pretty much I know, I just need to know which side of the graph this is on. So if I plug in, since it's 2, I'll plug in 3, so that's the right side of the asymptote, and I get 5 over 1. So that's up here, and it's above my horizontal asymptote, 
So that means my graph is probably looking like that and looking like that. And just to be sure, I'll plug into the left side of the asymptote, which is 1. Up top, I get 3. And at the bottom, I get minus 1. So I get minus 3. So sure enough, it is at minus, minus just down here, or right there, I guess. And there we go. And I know it behaves like this because this is un not unusual. It looks very much like a, um, a normal rational, except these x's will cancel. It's essentially, again, a line that's interrupted. And it's good to practice this anyway. Okay, so this one, they're just throwing you a curve by not using x, but it's the same rule. What can't this be at the bottom? It can't be 0. That means t can't be 3, which means that we have a vertical asymptote over here at t is equal to minus 3. And it's very much like a rational, except that this is squared, which means no matter what result other than 3 down here, we're going to get a positive number, which means all our results are positive, which means there is a, it never will cross the y is equal to 0 line. And to, to make sure of that, let's take, uh, oh, t is equal to positive 3. I put the asymptote on the wrong side. It should be actually be on this side. Okay, so it can't be positive 3. And to put a 4 in there, I get 1 over 1. And put a 5 over there, I get 1 over 4. But both are positive. Oh, if I put a 2 over there, it's minus 1, but it's still squared, so it's 1 over 1. So 1 over 4. So even though they don't quite match, and they can never cross that asymptote, you're looking at something bizarre like, like that. And I believe it would normally be able to go through that and create a weird bump. But I believe it's going to do something like that. And that's sort of what a 1x over x squared would look like anyway. You'd only have positive results. You couldn't have x is equal to 0. And the whole thing is going to look like, like that. And there you go. Yeah, sorry, 4 would create the same result. So you get 4 comma 1 and 3 comma uh, 2 comma 1. They're both matching on either side. So they're symmetrical. And let's move on. What about this one? Okay, well, it's good to factor with the top when you get two things. Because if they cancel out with the top, you're not dealing with a... Uh, you're not dealing with an asymptote, you're dealing with a hole. And I suspect that's what they're going to do. So up top, I see that it's x plus 3, x minus 3, rather. And x plus 2 is the factors, which means these cancel out, which means I'm really dealing with the line y is equal to x plus 2. So it goes through the y-intercept at 0, comma 2. And it looks great, except that when it reaches 3 for x, you're going to put a little hole there, and you're going to say undefined, undefined at 3, comma, what should normally be, um, what would normally be 3, comma, 5, but there's a big hole there. And then the line continues on normally, and that's the only exception. So that's where you don't, you get a discontinu discontinuity, but not an asymptote. That's what they want to get you used to. However, the restrictions still apply even once it cancels out. What about this one? Well, it's just a 6 up top, so we're just dealing with a number, and sometimes the result's going to be negative depending on what the x is, and sometimes it's going to be positive, but because there's two of them down here, we get an interesting thing where you should always develop a table like this. And you would also say, okay, here's this and here's that. I know I'm dealing with minus 3 for that one and 1 here. So I want to know what the graph does in between them, and I want to know what the graph does on this side and what the graph does on that side, because often it'll look like that. And the second thing I'm going to notice is this 6 over x squared. So it's got a horizontal asymptote, but y is equal to 0. Some of these still cross 0, and what you do is you set them to 0 to see if they cross, but these come over here and become 0, and 6 equals 0 can't exist. 
So it's not going to cross its horizontal asymptote. So that's how you figure it out. And all you need to do now is determine what it does on either side of this. So what's on either side of 1 and minus 3? Well, let's take 0. You get here over 3 times minus 1. So you get 6 over minus 3, which is minus 2. So at 0, we're right down here at minus 2. So that's a negative. You just take a negative. And then uh, on the other side, if it's, let's take minus 4, you get 6 over minus 1 times minus 5. You get 6 over 5. So we can see we're up positive. And I'm pretty much going to guarantee it's up positive here too. So for to the right side of 1, we're going to take 2. And when we punch 2 in, we get 6 over 5 times 1, which is 6 over 5. A little positive. So what we're dealing with here, since it does not cross its asymptote, and it's a pretty straightforward graph, you're dealing with some... Oh, you're not dealing with that. You're dealing with that. And then finally, you're dealing with something like this. Although can sometimes be spread wider than that and not quite drawn right but you're dealing with something like that and that's when you look at negative infinity over here it just gets closer and closer to zero positive infinity gets closer and closer to zero what you need to do is that line thing that I had with the look in the beginning of the last lesson and that's the best way to map out your your uh, your graph you can also figure out the maximum. I should go back. And by using, you can either expand them and do the, um, and this would not be a quotient, surprisingly. So if I was going to find the first derivative and find the maximum value of this point here, okay, you can do it like this. So expand the bottom. The bottom becomes x squared plus 2x minus 3. 6. Now, that 6 up top is simply... 6 as a multiplier, and this down at the bottom is the same thing as this. So you use the chain rule to take the derivative. Now the derivative of this becomes negative 6 over that whole thing squared again, because this goes down by 1 and sends it back to the bottom. But you also now have to multiply that negative 6 times the derivative of each thing in here, which is 2x plus 2. When I expand that, I get minus 12x minus 12. Minus 12x. And actually, you know what? You could just, yeah, well, okay. Minus 12x minus 12. And then when I uh, take minus 12 out of that, I get x minus 1. I think I got that right. So now, to find out the max, I'm going to set this to 0. Well, you can just ignore that. You can pretty much ignore that. And I determine that when x is 1, I'm going to get my 0. So now, my max point, not a 0. When the, the 0 for the first derivative equal to 0 means the slope is 0. So that's going to determine my max point. I know it's a max point from how we drew it. So now I'm going to put in 1 for here, and I get 6. Remember, we already did this, I believe. 4. And, uh, oh, so boom we have a restriction at 1. So I want to make sure that um, what's going on with that. So let's take the derivative again. So the derivative is 1, 6 times 1 over x squared plus 2x minus 3. Take the derivative of it. This would go up top and essentially becomes a minus 2 now sorry, or 2. This is a minus, and the derivative in times the inside is 2x plus 2. All right. Ah, I got, the, I got the, the plus wrong. So I can see that x, for this to be 0 now, x is equal to minus 1. My bad. So minus 1 is the actual answer. So 6, when minus 1 is here, I get 2. When minus here is, I get minus 2. And so I get 6 over minus 4, which is three over minus 3 over 2, which means at, zero, at uh, minus 1, comma, minus 3 over 2, I'm going to find my maximum for this thing. And that will also help me 
draw it. What about this one? So they're pretty much canceling out, so you're pretty much talking about a horizontal line. There's one exception to the rule here, though. They can't cancel out. However, I can do x plus 1 and x minus 1 at the bottom to discover that I have more than one asymptote. Okay, And so in this case, we have a funky little thing. And at x is equal to minus 1. Sorry for the bad writing. x is equal to 1 and x is equal to minus 1. We have vertical asymptotes because there's no cancellation. And then if I look at it, this power is the same as that power, right? And they both had a 1 in front of them. So there's a horizontal at y is equal to 1. So after that, you just want to determine what the graph looks like in between. So what's between 1 and minus 1? 0. So I get 0 up top, so that's going to be pretty easy. And these do not uh, negate. They just become a number, but it's 0. So I know it goes through 0, 0, which is great. And it's, that's probably the max, too. And now I'm going to find out what it does to the right of 1. I'm going to use 2. I get 4 up here times 3 times 1. So I get f positive 4 over 3, which is 1 above my asymptote. So right here at 2. So I'm going to get that and that. Now, you could take the derivative of this. So then you want to go back and expand it to figure out where this if this is indeed the max. Now my guess is going to be that it is indeed the max just because of the symmetry of this. But if I was going to take it now I need to do the quotient rule. So down below I have x squared minus 1. Up top I have x squared. I have to do the quotient rule because there's a term up there now. Okay. So quotient rule says derivative of this times the derivative times that minus the derivative of that times that all over that squared. Fortunately, if I was going to, and this is just extra, I know, but fortunately, if I was going to do this, I know that my denominator plays very little role in determining what's going to happen. And the derivative of that is not 2, it's 2x. In what's going to happen to it, so I'm going to get minus 2x, which is the derivative of that, times x squared. Notice that these are going to cancel out. So I get 2x cubed minus 2x. And then it's minus 2x cubed. So I'm left with minus 2x at the top. The numerator plays almost no role in determining. So when I set to 0, sure enough, x is 0. And as we know, when I plug it into the equation, we're talking about a 0 comma 0 max. That just helps you graph these things. I know it didn't ask it, but, oh, and if it wants, it, since this says limit test, you would actually get closer and closer to the asymptote, my bad, until it's really small to see where it's going, but just from my experience, I know what happens when we've determined which side of the graph it's on. It's, it's gonna go up. It, it can't mathematically suddenly change directions. Once I determine that it's positive, and once I determine the horizontal asymptote, I know what it's going to do as it approaches their, its asymptotes. So yeah, but you should take infinitesimally small amounts closer and closer to the asymptote to see where this graph is going. For each of the following, determine the equations of any horizontal asymptotes. So, there's two bits of information that I could also warn you about. Sometimes these graphs cross the asymptote. So looking at this, the powers are the same. The coefficients are, are that. So I know the horizontal asymptote is equal to 1. To see if they cross, you make it equal to 1. You have to bring this up to the other to this side. So you get x plus 4, and it disappears. And right away, when I bring the x over to this side, I get 0 is equal to 4, which tells me it does not cross its asymptote. That's how you know when the x's cancel out like that. So I know it never crosses. Which means, when I look at that graph, which is this, I just have to figure out what it does do from which side. Well, once I find out which side it's on of minus 4, so if I do an asymptote here, sorry, a graph here, at minus 4 here, 
is the vertical asymptote. I just have to figure out what it does at minus 5 and minus 3 to figure out what side of the asymptote it's on, and then I will know what it does as it approaches negative infinity. So looking at it, so negative 3 into here, I get negative 3 up top, and I get plus 1. So it's on the negative side. So right away, I know my graph is going to be like this. I'm going to make it green. And excuse the horrible drawing, but that's what it's roughly going to be. And I also know it's going to be on this side of the asymptote, which means as I approach negative infinity this way, I'm approaching y is equal to 1. And I didn't, I didn't draw the horizontal asymptote properly. I'm approaching y is equal to 1 from above. So I'm getting closer and closer from, to 1. So it'll be like 1.0001 because it's above the asymptote. And I know already that I determined it doesn't cross, which means on this side, as I approach positive infinity, I'm approaching y is equal to 1 from the bottom. So like 2 point, or sorry, 0 0.99999. And it'll never reach it. Whenever you're unsure, rely on your Desmos. And you can always just make that f of x if you want to make your life simpler. And you can just set like f to a million. And look at that, I'm below it. And f is equal to like negative 10,000. And look at that, I'm just above it. Now if you look at the graph, it's very clear. And I'm going to set my x is equal to minus 4. That's why I like Desmos is visually you're going to learn a lot faster. And I know from my setting my equation to equal to 0 that it never crosses. It also will never have any max or mins. There's no point in taking the derivative in this situation. Because with the one asymptote, it's always going to look sort of like a rational function. And that takes practice. If it's a number up here, the same thing. It's, it's going to be, see it flipped? And that's because the x's didn't cancel out their negatives. Also notice that because it's a 1, that horizontal asymptote disappeared, and now we're just dealing with a horizontal asymptote at the x-axis. And you should redo it to see if it crosses, and you'll discover, no, it, it, it never crosses. So all these things help to understand by graphing and by practice. And I believe that's it for that. Um, Oh, yeah, see, from above or below. So that's well worth doing. So I think we did that. I think we did A, right? Yeah, we did do A. So this one. Now notice that the power up above is below the power down below. It's one less. So we're dealing with a horizontal asymptote of y is equal to 0. The question is, does it cross? So we're going to set it. And we're going to set it equal the whole thing equals to 0 to see if it crosses it. So this comes up top and just becomes 0. When does 2x equal 0? Well, when x is equal to 0. Let's make sure. 0 up here makes 0. 0 down here makes minus 1. 0 over minus 1 is indeed 0, which means we have a cross situation. So we should figure out first the asymptotes down below, which I believe we already did sort of for this one over here, almost. We got an x plus 1 down here, an x minus 1 situation, and a 2x up here, which means again, looking at a graph, we're dealing with a vertical, two vertical asymptotes. Here at x is equal to minus 1, and here at x is equal to 1. We have to see their question is based on the horizontal asymptote only, so we need to figure out as it gets out here, what side is it approaching on? Well, let's figure out the whole thing. So let's just take 0. We discovered 0, 0. So my guess is my graph goes like this, which makes sense because when we cross over to positive x's, this, I believe, will still stay negative. So when it's like 0.5, we get 1.5 here, negative 0.5 here. But this will still take be positive, so the whole result is positive. Whereas over here, it's going to go down. So this is probably the only spot it crosses the horizontal asymptote and it's you're still allowed to cross it in some spots and now we just got to determine what it does when it's above one so let's take two we get four um, over three and it's positive which makes sense because this side was positive so 
so we're really dealing with something like that which means over here I'm willing to bet donuts to dollars we're dealing with a negative so negative 2 becomes negative 4 up here down below it becomes negative 1 times negative 3 oh hang on let's make sure yeah that still works so it's negative uh, 2 becomes negative 1 down there and negative 3 which becomes a positive here sorry it becomes a positive down here but stays a negative up here so we notice we're having matching points on the other side so it's very symmetrical which makes sense based on this asymptote and this value although this will create a stretch so this is what we're going to do so already I know it, it approaches the y from underneath because it only crossed the asymptote once I determined that already so that means it's approaching y is equal to zero from underneath from negative infinity and from above from positive infinity and again just put it into your Desmos so there's oh now what happened there so we had some weird weird cancellations here why did we have a cancellation there why is there so I did some oh no I didn't there we go now notice I also did a calculation error because I got this on the wrong side but that's okay this question was only concerned with this and sure enough if I put in f minus a thousand I'm approaching zero from the negative side and if I put in f plus a thousand ten thousand I'm approaching zero from the positive side but I did get that calculation wrong which but I still had the right idea it crosses through origin that's the kind of mistake you can make just one little negative that's why you should set up an accurate um, positive negative chart like I did in the beginning of the last video fortunately I would not have been penalized because they're asking something very specific here and I answered the very specific okay what about these so again you always want to factor in situations like this or see if it can be factored so obviously the bottom is a difference of squares you're always going to keep your eye out for difference of cubes and difference of squares because it's the thing they like the most and up above it can't be factored notice they're the same power so I have to look at their coefficients 3 over 1 so y is equal to 3 is the or is, or is, is equal to the horizontal so this we have a very similar case to the last time except that notice down here um, uh, this is other than these situations actually in between it's going to be negative in between those points it's going to be negative it's going to be smaller than one and then outside of that this is always going to be positive because negative two or positive two here will always create a positive number so down below so far I know it's only negative between these uh, or, uh, vertical asymptotes up above is what I got to figure out so you really should c construct a number chart and say what happens you also want to figure out if there's a x-intercept because things do happen at the x-intercepts so sure enough if I set this if I put in 0 for here I get 4 up above and down below I get minus 1 so that's minus uh, minus 4 so when t is 0 I know that I'm way down here at minus 4 so that's important that already tells me I'm going to be down here and I also want to see what happens if I can I ever cross this so if I can ever cross the asymptote so I set it to equal to zero equal to three I bring this up I get three t squared minus three I get all the threes on the same side all the t squareds I get zero so right away way I get zero is equal to minus seven so therefore I know it cannot cross uh, it cannot cross the asymptote which means in between I have a negative number that makes sense because in between I already determined that the bottom will always in between negative 1 and 1 I already determined that the bottom will be negative and the top will always be positive therefore the result positive divided by negative will always be negative so I'm dealing with that now if I wanted to find the max I would take the derivative of that using the quotient rule and find this max here the others are not going to have a max so let's look at minus 2 so when it's minus 2 what am I dealing with so minus 2 I get uh, 4 here 
So minus 2 is always going to create a positive 4, and same with positive 2, so it's going to be the same result. So up here I get 4, I get 12, plus 4, I get 16, and down here I get 3. And I'm going to get 16 over 3 for positive 2 and negative 2, um, because positive 2 and negative 2 squared are the same thing. So this is the result. It's positive, and it's on the top side of the graph. However, notice, oh yeah, and it's above 3, because 3 goes into 16, 5 times and 1 third. So it's above my asymptote right up here, and I know it doesn't cross, which means as it goes to positive infinity over here, it approaches 3 from the top. And as it goes to negative infinity over here, it approaches 3 from the top. And that's what you needed to figure out. That's what the, the squares did. And then finally, the last one. And the last one's pretty simple, except I'm going to guess it's going to cancel out with the top. So to figure out the factor here, you have to come up with a number that f multiplies out to minus 21 and adds up to minus 8. So fortunately, there's only a few of these that'll work, if possible. So minus 8. So what are the factors of 21? We have uh, 3 and 7 and 21 and 1. And when I look at that... It can't, it can't factor, I don't believe, unless I did something wrong. Minus 21, is there any other factors of minus 21 I'm not seeing? No, there's not. So, since it can't add up to minus 8, there are no clean factors up here, which means it's not going to cancel, which means I do indeed have a vertical asymptote up here when x is equal to 4. I just need to figure out what happens when x is 5 and when x is 3. So when x is 5 up here, I get 3 times uh, 25, 75, minus 40, minus 7. So all divided by 1. So that means I get a positive value. I also notice that this is x squared and this is x. So I believe we're going to be having a um, something like that, which is a bleak, an oblique um, asymptote. And so instantly I just need to figure out which side it's on of the oblique asymptote. So for 5, I've determined that it's positive, but the question is, is it doing this? Which is po possibly true. So really I should find out what it's doing over here at 0. What is it doing over here at 0? It's minus 7 over minus 4, which is a positive result, which is positive 7 over 4. Okay, so here's the problem is we're getting positive results each time. Let's figure out where that oblique asymptote is. So we're going to take 3x squared minus 8x minus 7, and we're going to divide it by x minus 4. So how many times can x go into 3x squared? It can go 3x times. 3x squared, but 3x times minus 4 is minus 12x. Now I subtract them. Minus, minus 12 is plus 12, so I get 4x. And then how many times can x go into 4x plus 4 times? Boom, that's good enough right there. We're left with 4x minus 16, and the remainder becomes um, 9 plus 9. So you're left with 9 over x minus 4 as a remainder. If I was going to write this as a new um, equation, it would be written like this. And you will discover that this graph here, produces the same graph as that graph there, which is bizarre, isn't it? And that's just in brackets. And we can test that out if you want. But what we're going to do instead now is understand that as x approaches infinity here, as x approaches positive infinity, this becomes an infinitesimally small number, right? And this just becomes huge plus 4. So we can see that it becomes insignificant. Even though it becomes a minus, it becomes minus 9 over like 1 billion. Okay, and Sometimes it's plus 9 over 1 billion. In either case, it's adding. And then we're just talking about a 4. So really, we're just talking about 3x. So that means as this thing gets to... Um, 3 billion, I guess, is a way of saying it. 
if we're going to do this technically, factor out the bottom and the top the way they do. So you're up top, you're left with 3x squared, 1 minus 8 over 3x uh, minus 7 over 3x squared. And at bottom, when you factor out the x, you're left with 1 minus 4 over x. It's very clear that these become insignificant, and this is what you're left with. And it's quite clear that as um, you, when you divide these by it, you're left with 3x. So as x approaches a huge positive, you're left with a huge y positive. And as x approaches negative, you're left with a huge negative y. So you're talking about on the left, a line that's going like that. It's going to hit the asymptote. And then on the other side, you're dealing with that. Let's test it out. I can't remember if that's the exact one. No, it's minus 7. And the bottom, x minus 4. And according to me, my oblique uh, asymptote is now... Oh, look at that. I got something totally wrong. Oh, no, I didn't. So it just went down the wrong way. So th then, according to me, my uh, line formula is 3x plus 4. Plus 4. And if I zoom out, there it is. So notice that we still got the answer right. As y approaches, x approaches negative infinity, y approaches negative infinity. As x approaches positive infinity, it goes on. I just got the turning point wrong. And for that, you would take values very close to your asymptote of x is equal to 4 to figure out what the graph is doing. Also notice that I claim this. I claim that g of x is equal to 3x plus 4 plus 9 over x minus 4 was my claim. And my claim was that I would have the same graph with this formula as I would with the one above. Let's see by turning it off and on. Yes, I would. And it's hard to fathom that this is the same equation as this that this is just the factored fat version. And it's also easier to see where the line came from, right? The asymptote, which I'll turn on now. All th handy things to understand. All right. Part B. Check for discontinuities and use at least two other tests to make a rough sketch of the curve. No. I mean... I can do this over and over again all day, but I've just shown you the techniques of how to do it, and nothing much has changed, except I will tell you if there's any tricks in it. Okay, some of them are super standard. This is super standard. It only has one asymptote, right? And that's over here at x is equal to minus 5, which means you just need to figure out what happens on either side of minus 5 uh, in order to do a rough sketch of the curve. Well, let's find the asymptote. It's same power, so it's y horizontal is y is equal to 1. Does it ever cross? Does this ever equal to x plus 5? No, it doesn't. So it never crosses. So then that means it's only going to be on this side or that side. So let's take a 0. Let's use for 0. So you get minus 3 over 5, which means over here at 0, it's minus 3 fifths. So it's right down there which means I'm dealing with something like that. Just to make sure, let's take minus 10. So you're dealing with minus 13 over minus 5. That's a positive number, and it's above my horizontal asymptote. It's about 2. I don't need to test near the asymptote for things like this, because I know how it's going to behave. And that comes from studying your your graphs and knowing how your graphs behave. This one, different story. Notice the bottom. There's only one situation that's a problem down here, and that's when x is minus 2. But the top is just a constant. So what is x down here of minus 2 going to create? It's going to create an asymptote at x is equal to minus 2. How does this graph behave on either side of that x? When x is minus 3, even though this is a negative number, it gets squared and it becomes positive. When x is positive, or 0, let's say, this again becomes a positive. So we're dealing with something, and by the way, there's no 
powers there, so we're talking about y is equal to zero. So we're dealing with something that never crosses the y-axis and only goes up like that. Okay. If you want to see if it ever equals its asymptote, you can set it to zero, but you'll discover it comes out to something like this, 5 equals zero, and that tells you no. It doesn't ever cross it. And it can't, really. You can see right away this is always positive except in that one spot where there's a vertical asymptote. That's because these things always look like this. Was it, uh, was it minus 2 or was it plus 2? I can't remember. It was plus 2. Yeah, makes a big difference. And I'm just going to get rid of the other graphs. And there it is. So, oh yeah, to sketch it, so just plug in a couple values. And, oh, what did I do wrong there? Did I do the thing wrong? Oh, yeah, I did the thing wrong. There we go. Totally different graph. There we go. Exactly what we drew. So, there you go. It'll never have a max min, so there's no point in taking a derivative. And if you know your graphs, you know when you're wasting your time. So that's that one. This one, you should factor the top first to see if there's a cancellation instead of a, an asymptote. So, minus 15 and minus 2. We're talking about 5 and 3. So up top, we're talking about t minus 5. t plus 3. It's going to cancel out with the bottom. You're left with a line t plus 3 where there's a hole at 5 comma 0. So that's just a normal line. And rough sketch, it's just draw the line, go through the 0 comma 3 spot. So it's essentially just a straight line that's elevated by 3. And then right here, draw a hole at 5 comma 0. And you're done. What about this one? Can the bottom ever equal to zero. Well, factor it first. Realize that the bottom is actually this. And I always like doing this, by the way, because it gives you a much clearer image of when zero exists down at the bottom. Notice that it looks like it might be able to factor up top, but it can't, or cancel out up top. But it can't, because this is minus 2x plus 3 up here. Almost. Even if I take the minus out, I'm still left with 2x minus 3, almost, not quite, which means I have two x-intercepts up top, and I, I like rewriting them in terms of the correct order, by the way. So down below, this is a more interesting graph at least, and worth my time. So at least we've got a couple of interesting things going on. And I can tell you that at this here, right on the y-axis, we've got x is equal to 0 as an asymptote. And then right over here at 3. Boom. And I can also tell you that when x is, let's rearrange this one. When x is minus 2, it crosses the x-axis. And when x is equal to 3 over 2, which is 1 over uh, 1 and a half, 0, 1 and a half, 1.5, it crosses over. You should also find out if the what these are when they expanded. When I expanded, I get minus 2x squared up top, and down below I have just 1x squared, which means I have a horizontal asymptote at minus 2. Unusual this time. So they make it hard for you. Which means my graph probably is not going to cross y is equal to minus 2. And so you could also set this, either one, to equal to minus 2 to see if they cross. So you get this is equal to minus 2. And you do this to see if it ever crosses that asymptote. You get minus 2x squared plus 6x. Okay. And what's the expansion of the top? You should always expand your top also if you're ever going to find your max in mints. 
the expansion of the top is 6 uh, minus 4x plus 3x, so minus x, and then minus 2x squared. Notice my x squareds will cancel out. Don't forget that this says plus 6x, though. Was it 6x? Did I factor something out at the wrong at the bottom? Yeah, minus 6x. So these things at the top will, see that's a problem when, you don't, when you're not taking proper notes. So you get 6 minus x minus 2x squared. When this 2x squared comes over, they cancel out. Okay, you get that is equal to minus plus 6x. Okay, and up top, this was 6 minus x, yeah. So when this goes over, I get 7x is equal to 6. And I discover that indeed, when x is equal to 6 over 7, it's going to cross the asymptote. 6 over 7 is almost at 1. So right here at 1, there's a crossover of some kind. So that's important to know. So it's probably doing, I don't know, is it touching and coming back? Or is it, I believe it's going to do something like that. Okay. It would be important to test on either side of that point to see what the graph does. So test right near the asymptotes. The other thing you should do is you should take your derivative of this and it's easier to expand it first. Use your quotient function and you can see where if, there's, if that's a max or not. I don't believe it will be. Let's take, um, let's, let's go back to the factor, to the expanded form. You get minus 2x squared. Uh, you get a plus 6 at the end, and you get minus x in the middle. And down below, we're just going to leave it like this, okay? And there's no need to divide it out, but we will divide it out just to see what it's going to do. So we get minus 2x squared, and we're just left with a bunch of junk over x squared. And when these become negative, they become the same, and it's going to approach minus 2. It's just the question is, does it approach it from the positive or the negative side? Well, we've already determined that it's on this side here. We need to determine now on this side. So at 4, this becomes 6. What becomes this? 3 minus 8 times minus 5. So it's 30, negative 30. And the bottom becomes 4, 16, minus 12, positive 4. So it becomes negative 7.5, which means on this side of the graph, below the asymptote, it does this. And there, now we know what side it approaches from. Boom. Let's see if we came close. So 2x, this is the formula. And I, oh, by the way, I should test... I'm going to test like, I should test right near 2.9 to see what this does. So wh what I'll do is just take 3, and then I'll just kind of ignore, I'll guess, I'll guess the bottom. So if it was 3 up top, it would be 5, and it would be 3 minus 10, which would be minus 7. So it would be about minus 35 up top. And then down here, because this cancels out, right, I'm going to take like 2.9. So I get something that's just below 9 minus something that's just below 9. And which one will be bigger? This one will be bigger. So it's going to be negative. So yeah, it's going to do that. So let me see if I got it right, though. 2 plus x, 3 minus 2x. Doesn't help that they put everything in reverse order. It also helps for you to expand it and to factor x squared minus 3x. Notice they've factored the top, but expanded the bottom, which is weird. There, I think I got it. Let me make sure. Oh, no, this is not, that's not correct here. I think it's x plus 2, which is the same thing as 2 plus x. Yeah, 3 minus 2x, yep x squared minus 3x, so that makes a difference. All right, so notice I got this little wiggle wrong. So again, I should have taken values right
close to the asymptote to determine this wiggle is incorrect. However, I got this correct, and I got this correct, and I got the asymptote is correct at the horizontal and at the vertical. And notice it crosses through it. Uh, crosses through the x-axis. Sorry, it didn't cross through the asymptote. And we get x is equal to, what did I say was the other one? x is equal to 3 is the other one. So there we go. That's the drawing of it. And I believe my question was, did it ever cross the asymptote? And sure enough, there is where it crossed the asymptote. I just got what happens on this. Yeah, so that's another reason to take very small values. So if I take an x, f of 2.99, I would have seen that it, it climbs up very high. And if I took f of 0 0.111, 0 0.0001, I would have seen that it goes down very low. And I would have been able to graph it. Now, obviously, I winged it. Shows what happens when you wing it. And But I got a lot of information. There's not going to be a max min, so taking the derivative is useless on this. I'm probably going to have to quit for a little while because I have some things I have to do. However, I'd like to try this. Yeah, okay, we did that already. We Yeah, so the only thing I should have done is test closer to the asymptote. And I encourage you to do that, to actually take the time and punch out a number like 2.99 into the equation on your calculator to figure out what if the result is hugely positive or hugely negative and that's that'll tell you a lot about where the graph is going for those wiggle ones uh, nine so once you know the behavior again these are the same questions over and over again I guess they're just getting you used to graphing and I do notice that students resist graphing rational functions and it's a shame because when you get good at them, they're pretty easy, and they're easy marks, because your teacher just wants to see your graphing ability. And w you might say, well, why do I need this? Well, it's really about your future ability to interpret graphs that look like this, because nature does imitate these things. Nature does have sine curves in it. Nature does have rational functions in it. Nature does have growth curves in it. So right away, I can see x can't be equal to minus 5. I see that there's an asymptote up, or sorry, an um, x-intercept up here. When it x is one third, we get zero. So right away, I'm going to draw it. I got this, and they're the same power. So I got a horizontal at y is equal to three. I know that at one third x, it's at zero which is right there so I know right away this curves on that side and this curves on this side because it's a very simple one I, I don't have to test near the asymptotes to tell you that my only next question is does it ever cross this 3 so does the top ever equal to 3x plus 15 I can see right away the 3x's are going to cancel out and I'm left with like 16 is equal to 0 so that means it never crosses the horizontal asymptote which usually doesn't for the simple ones. You usually can't ever find a situation where it can cross. And B, factor the top always to see if you have any cancellations. Notice that when this expands, it's x squared, and this is x squared, so that you have a horizontal asymptote of y is equal to 1. Notice that first, if this can factor, so indeed I have x my, no, I cannot come up with a number that would add up to 3 because minus 2 plus 1 doesn't work. So that doesn't work up top. So there's no factoring up top. Um, at the bottom, I can see that x cannot be 1. x cannot be 1. Um, so that means we're dealing with, but it's squared, so that's an important thing. So that's important, which means I'm dealing with a graph that's like this. And I'm going to be dealing with a vertical asymptote that's at x is equal to 1. 
and I'm dealing with a horizontal asymptote that y is equal to 1. The only question is, does this ever equal to 1? So I'm just going to put it aside for a second, make a copy. So the only question is, does this ever equal this? And right away I can tell you probably not, because the expansion of this is x squared minus 2x plus 1. The x squareds cancel out. Ah, I do get 5x, so it does possibly cross. And this minus 2 goes to this side, becomes 3. So when x is 3 over 5, I do cross it. So that's important to know. So at x is 3 over 5, which is roughly here. I'm going to cross it. Interesting. You'd want to confirm that a few times. Um, you also want to confirm what happens when x is 2 and when x is 0. So when x is 0, going back to the main graph, I'm going to confirm the way that crosses, by the way. When x is 0, what happens up top? I get minus 2. When x is 0 down below, I get positive 1. So that means that 0 comma minus 2 is where we cross, which is right there. So that's interesting. So what the hell happens here? So you really want to find out what happens when it's really close, and you want to make sure that you did your calculation right. And I'm probably going to go back and make sure, minus 2x, 5x. No, it, it does indeed cross. So we're going to want to figure out what happens when it's really close to x. And we also want to take an x value of like way over here, like 2. So when it's 2, we're going to get uh, 4 plus 8 minus 2, which is 10. And 2 down here is over 1. So it's a big old positive number, which makes sense, because the only time this is negative will be when this is between uh, 1 and minus 1. Let's see, no, 0, from 0 to 1. Yeah, so 0, no. It will never be a negative number down there, because it's always squared. Oh, it's never going to be a negative number, so I just have to figure out when this is a negative number. Interesting graph. So anyway, it says I'm up here, over here, and like that. But this x squared does something, and I want to figure it out. And I believe it's going to do some weird thing like, oh, gee, I don't know what it could possibly do. So this take will take some more analysis, actually. And I assumed it was going to be an easy one, and I'm wrong. So other than x is 1, this is always positive. So when is this below 0? When x squared plus 3x is below 2. When x, x plus 3 is below 2. When is x, so when x is below 2, or when x is below, below minus 1. So let's see if that's true true so it's saying that's negative I believe the only possible is below negative 1 so we'll test for both of them we'll say for 1 so when it's 1 I get 1 plus 3 minus 2 that's positive and then we're going to test for minus 1 so when it's minus 1 I get 1 plus 3 minus 2 so that doesn't work oh minus 1 now I get 1 minus 3 minus 2 so that's negative good. And didn't I say 0 was minus 2? Yeah. So when x is smaller than 2, or when x is smaller than minus 3, something happens. Very, I'm very puzzled by this one, and I'm tempted just to throw it in the, the graph. I do know it has a horizontal asymptote, but y is equal to 1. I do know it crosses it once. Let's make sure it crosses it once. Yeah, at x is equal to 3 over 5, it crosses it. And I know the asymptote is at 1, and that's below 1. Very odd behavior. Let's go 
going to cross it and then hug it. And then this one's going to be above it. And then I also know that when we have a 10 up here, this whole thing is positive. So it's above the asymptote. I believe it just crosses it and then hugs it from the top. So it probably has a maximum. So you should probably take a derivative and find that maximum. It's probably somewhere right there. This side, I don't believe, has a maximum. And it does have that weird situation. I'm curious what this... I can't... I don't have the time to do this right now. And I wish I hadn't done this one just now. x squared plus 3x minus 2. All divided by... Was it x minus 1 squared? Let's have a look. It was x minus 1 squared, x squared plus 3x minus 2. Oh, okay, that's why I can't kind of figure it out. So it required a lot more analysis. I'm going to set my x is equal to my is equal to 1 here to see what it does in terms of this. I'm going to set my y is equal to 1 as well. So yeah, it did cross it. And that was the thing that was frigging me up. Had I taken the derivative, I would have found that minimum. I was right. The right side just behaves normally. So we had to take some values right close to this to realize that it shot way up. And that's what was screwing me up. I couldn't understand this part of it. And I should have realized from that 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 creates that sort of situation. Because the values between 0 and 1 right there will create big negative, bigger negative numbers than it will over here. I was right, except that it didn't cross over and reach from the top, it crossed over and reached from the bottom. Good examples of why you have to sit there and actually plug numbers in and actually come up with these values, which are values right close to the asymptote on the left side and right close to the asymptote on the right side of it. And you'll discover, wow, they're both huge positive y values. So that we discover that they're both shooting up. Which would make you probably take a derivative and find the mat, the min. There's the crossover point. Um, or sorry, that's the uh, x-intercept. And the crossover point of y is equal to 1 was right here. Like I said, 6 over 10 is the same as uh, 2 thirds. No, not quite. It's 3 over 5, which is what we found. So th that told me it crossed the asymptote, which was helpful information, but I didn't investigate it enough. Interesting graph, um, which means I just have to be, you know, you have to be more diligent about what you test. And that's where you test very infinitesimally small numbers right near the top and bottom. So the question up top, can this factor? Yes, it can. Can this factor? Yes, it can. So right away, I see that I'm going to have a hole there at x is equal to 2. So I should figure out where that is roughly. And to figure out where that is, you should really um, take the limit. And so I'll do that in a second. But I'm really left with that. And that's going to be an asymptote. So that means you can have an asymptote at x is equal to minus 1, sorry, x is equal to minus 2. And it also means that um, if you notice that the same power, so there's a horizontal asymptote, but y is equal to 1, you should also see if they ever cross. So keep in mind I'm actually left with x plus 5 up top, or sorry, x plus 3. And the x minus 2's cancel out. So it's really going to look like this graph with a hole right there. And this graph is just a simple uh, rational function. So we shall then just see if they ever equal their horizontal asymptote of 1. We're left with x minus 6 is equal to minus 4. So when x is equal to 2, we get an interesting thing as well. Okay, so when x is equal to 2. 
So that means, um, oh, and that was our restriction, remember? So that's where it's trying to cross the asymptote and can't. Good, interesting. And so you would take values right near minus two, which I know I should be doing it, but I'm not because I already know it's going to look like a graph like this. But at two comma one, we're going to have a hole. X plus three, X minus two, X plus two, X minus one, minus two. And you want to include all your things in here so that you, oh, come on, so that you correctly f spot your holes. And it's probably quitting time for me just because I can tell I'm doing a lot of stupid things right now. And we can see there, yeah, see, it's the normal. It looks like a normal function. And then right over here when we hit 10, was it f of 10? I forget when I decided it was equal to, no, f of 2. Right here when we hit f of 2, something weird should happen. Undefined. There you go. So it didn't cross the graph, so I did some weird calculation error there. But it does behave just as I thought it would, except for right there. And then you just find if it's ever equal to this. So you ask yourself, does this ever equal the horizontal asymptote of 1. And it will solve for x. And it's painting a blue line somewhere and saying no. Okay. So there's that. Yeah, so the only unusual thing about this is that there's a hole at 2 right there. Other than that, it just looks like this graph. It's that graph with a hole. And that graph is not hard to predict, so that was a bit of a waste of time. And what's the last one they're asking? They're given m of x. And again, you should just see if this factors. So you get 10 and minus 3. Does that ever factor? 2 and 5, it could, um, but it's plus 10, so it would be minus 2 and minus 5, so that doesn't work. So that's no good, and there's no other factor that works. So this does not factor, which means that's a vertical asymptote. And there should be nothing real, really special about it. At y is equal to 2. But you should notice that it is not, it's going to be an oblique. It's going to be an oblique uh, asymptote as well. This goes in 5x times. So you get 5x squared minus 10x. When I subtract it, I'm left with 7x. And it goes in plus 7. Therefore, I have an oblique asymptote. y is equal to 5x plus 7. So it's just important to understand what infinite numbers do um, when, I, when x gets huge. To do that, you just factor out 5x squared up top and whatever's left. And then you factor out x up top and you can see that they cancel out. You're left with 5x, which means infinite values of x will hit positive y's and infinite values of this will hit negative. The only question is what happens right close to 2? So you should really take 2.001. So in the first case to the right, we're going to be left with a tiny, tiny, tiny positive number. And at the top, if I just take 2, we're left with 4, 20, minus 6, 16. We're left with a bit big number. So it's going to go way up. So that means it's going woo, way up. And then if I take very negative numbers, I know it's negative infinity. And I just got to figure out, OK, so this is a very tiny negative number, negative 0.0001, when I go to the left of the asymptote. 
which means it's going way down. So it's going to go like that, come close to the asymptote and go like that. So in red, if I'm going to do it improperly, it looks roughly like that and roughly like that. And it's going to look like that. And the last question is, does it ever cross its asymptote? So you make it equal to its asymptote. Um, and that's a good question. Do I make it equal to its, I think I have to make it equal to its asymptote. And then you solve for x, so you're going to get 5x squared minus 8x minus 5 is equal to 0. Does minus 25 ever have multipliers that add up to minus 8? It's a good question. So I'm just going to put this 3x minus 1, x plus 5. And I'm going to draw the line y is equal to, what did I say? Oh, that's not, uh, that's not it, by the way. 3x over, what was it, x plus 1? Yeah, 5x squared minus 3x plus 2. That's the top. And what's the bottom? Uh, x minus 1, was that it? Yeah, and then I'm going to draw the line 5x plus 3. And sure enough, and look at that. I wish I'd, I, w I should have been able to figure this out if it is equal to that. What value? So let's see if that's ever going to be equal to that. And yeah, it's telling me two spots it crosses. When x is 0 0.69 and when x is minus 3.9. Interesting, it doesn't do it over here. Boom. But it does do it there. So that would have been interesting to find out. if, when the, What you do is you set this formula equal to this line, and then you solve. But I can, s and it should have solved nicely, actually. So I'm going to just, and that's when two equations meet, is when their equations meet. So all you'd have to do is say, does this uh, top part, or actually, I should actually do it like this, ever equal this line? So when I expand it, oh god, yeah, that's that was my mistake. So when I expand it, I bring this over here. You get five x squared minus five x plus three x minus 3 and then you got to just see when that equals to this so clearly these will cancel out so I'm left with 5x is equal to minus 5 so then where x is equal to minus 1 and then I just have to go back here and plug that in for f of minus 1 or do it on your calculator and then I would have discovered that point which is a shame because that's a good point to know. Minus 1, comma, f of minus 1. Right there. And that's how you figure out if two lines cross. You make their equations equal. And my mistake was I forgot the denominator over and over again. And that's just fatigue. So I'm going to stop there and uh, try to continue on. But most of this is graphing.